Um, I'd like to now call Dr. Shabir Chaudhary on stage. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Madam Chair, friends and colleagues, Assalamu alaikum and very good evening to all of you. As you know, we are here to discuss CPAC. And it's been told that it's called China Pakistan Economic Corridor. However, due to resentment and disagreements, some Pakistanis like to call it China Punjab Economic Corridor. For that is for them to say, but I, we just call it CPAC. Yeah? If C CPAC was to empower people of Gilgit Baltistan, if it was to empower people of uh, Sindh, KPK, and of course Balochistan, I would have been the first one to support it wholeheartedly. Unfortunately, the CPAC has all the ingredients to bring disaster to all these regions I mentioned and also to the South Asia. And we'll discuss a little more uh, in a minute. Surely, the CPAC will make some more Pakistani millionaires, and many more in China as well. And I am, for one, not interested how many more people are empowered, rich people already. What I want to know is what is there for the local people. Madam Chair, this is my book on CPAC. No matter how many times I say this is Bible, it won't become a Bible. It will remain a book on CPAC. Similarly, no matter how many times China and Pakistan say this is economic project, it is not an economic project. <clears throat> CPAC has many aspects and dimensions. However, that, you know, what we need to look at is that certain parts are still hidden, as been pointed out by my colleague. There is a lack of transparency, and it has great geopolitical and strategic significance. Strategic experts say, don't look at the intentions of your enemy. Look at his ability, because intentions can change any time. We'll go to look at what this is going to do. You know, for example, you know, people say it is a uh, economic project because it's going to, it has provided employment. Pakistan is a country with a nuclear arsenal and de delivery system, very good delivery system to fire them as well, and control and command system. I'm sure while creating this system and nuclear weapons, they must have provided employment to tens of thousands of people. Does that make the, uh, the nuclear project economic one? To me, it doesn't. Madam Chair, Gilgit Barsan, a person from Gilgit Barsan called Allah Bakshi, in his article, CPAC, a recipe for mega disaster, he writes, and I quote, students who came out on streets dubbed the project as an illegal attempt to grab Gilgit and see it as a road to slavery of Gilgit and Pakistan. And he goes on to explain how Pakistan and China uh, have got, to get, got together to, to take over their land and their homes. And he concludes by saying that one belt, one road, uh, you know, is, is the mission of that is to make China the next United States of America, unquote. Another Kashmiri journalist and a political analyst from so-called Azad Kashmir, Mushtaq Moore, uh, while talking about, uh, while explaining the situation there, he says, and on the, especially on the status of uh, uh, Gilgit Balsan, he says, and I quote, Pakistan has no right to encroach territory of Jammu Kashmir state. It will be considered territorial aggression and backstabbing. Morally and legally, Pakistan will be exposed. A Pakistani uh, scholar and author of two brilliant books on Pakistan, Dr. S. Akbar Zaidi, while speaking to a conference held in Calcutta, uh, it, 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 it was, which was arranged by a think tank called the Calcutta Research Group, said, and I quote, 
CPAC is part of China's One Belt, One Road initiative to expand its influence in the world, and Pakistan is just the geographical space by Beijing to reach the warm waters of Persian Gulf. But in the process, Beijing blueprint will ensure complete control over Pakistan. It is indeed a game changer, but not in the way our ruling class have been projecting it. It will enslave Pakistan and undermine its sovereignty, unquote. I've got all the references if anybody wants to look at them. Pakistani ruling elite has a history of taking dictations from powerful friends and allies. For example, America, we all know it, even Britain, uh, other Western countries, Saudi Arabia, and even tiny UAE, United Arab Emirates, they have been dictating them. Now all this role, uh, all this role has been taken over by China. And of course, it will have a serious uh, repercussions. CPAC will, of course, uh, strengthen China's position, and Beijing will, too, will use its influence to project its agenda in the region and beyond. Dr. Zaidi blames the Pakistani ruling elite for leading the country down the path of, again, enslavement, his words, not mine. He said one bad, one road, uh, one is re once is ready, the Pakistan will become China's colony. And some Pakistani analysts fear that Pakistan may become 35th province of China. Very strong word, 35th province. Or maybe, he says, it could be one, it could be, uh, Pakistan could become third special administrative economic region, like Hong Kong. Again, strong, but not my words. Yeah? <clears throat> Madam Chair, it's already been explained. I think you did it. You explained where it starts, CPAC, and where it ends. In my nutshell, and again, I'm quoting the local person from Kashmir. He says, we, it starts from an occupied country. It ends in occupied country, occupied region, Balochistan. People of Balochistan regarded occupied. It enters into Gilgit Pakistan, which is occupied, of course, controlled by Pakistan. Then, of course, it goes to KPK, again, very volatile place. But what we need to know is that Pakistan has not only occupied my country, Gilgit Pakistan. It has given around 2,000 square miles of that area to China to win, win its friendship. I mean, it's illegal occupation and giving, given illegally uh, to China as well. Some pa uh, pa Kashmiri people get upset when uh, they, you know, they find out that Pakistan has given this territory away. But they need to understand Pakistan's compulsions as well. Friends do exchange gifts, don't they? In order to show solidarity and uh, express uh, you know, goodwill and good wishes. <coughs> Madam Chair, because the time, I mean, I've got a long speech, but I, I want to cut it down. The, in my opinion, the CPAC will enable China, number one, develop its underdeveloped region. Remember, where it's starting from, that is underdeveloped. Use its surplus production apart from cement to use it for, for construction of the CPAC projects and ensure that its economy does not slow down. Number three, have military and secret agencies stationed, again, in my territory, territory in Gilgit Barsan, a territory which is disputed and which is full of natural resources. Only two minutes left. I haven't made a start yet. <laughs> anyway, control of Gilgit Barsan will enhance China's military position because these areas have tremendous strategic significance. And of course, the spread of a network of a secret agencies and that will mean that crack, cracking down on uh, uh, people of Gilgit Barsan and, of, of course, people in uh, uh, Pakistan as well. They will regulate um, many aspects of Pakistani economy. Uh, they will control these special economic zones. They are there for Chinese goods, not Pakistani goods. And they will become enclave, Chinese enclave in, 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 with time. And, of course, thousands of uh, acres uh, of fertile land will be uh, given to China. Uh, there are a lot of other things, and China will get 91% uh, of the profit from Gwadar. For 40 years, Pakistan is happy to get 99%. Uh, China will invest, uh, at present, I know its price has gone up, but 56, uh, they are investing. In 30 years, they will get 90,000, 90, 90 billion, can't be bad. And use of Gwadar port as a naval base, which will enable China to influence sea transport and politics of the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean and link with the other 
the string of pearls and advance the Chinese agenda of controlling the world economic order. And of course, uh, the CPAC can be used as alternative route, supply route, if there is a problem in the South uh, China Sea, possibly blockade of the state of uh, uh, Malacca. Of course, there's mutual benefits as well. Uh, this will uh, uh, help both of countries to you know, crush the Balochistan rebellion, and people in Gilgit were they will silence them, and it is ideal for Pakistan, etc., etc. The impediments to the CPAC, Pakistan's weak economy, economic uh, competition from Jabbar port, India's air cargo service to Afghanistan, security of the CPAC rule and employees, instability in Balochistan, Afghanistan, KPK, and uh, Gilgit Baltistan. Uh, there are many, many other things I can add, but just to, just to conclude, Madam Chair, if, if uh, and I just want to quote one, one uh, uh, gentleman, um, Mohammed Ishaq, a leading industrialist and, industrialist and a director of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Board of Investment and Trade. In conversation to, uh, with the Asia Times, he said, and I quote, there is absolutely nothing in the CPAC for the local trade and industry. Even the labor is coming from China, which will uh, cause a steep es escalation. And he says, CPAC will be a big disaster for Pakistan, unquote. If, Madam Chair, Madam, Madam Chair if, uh, if uh, this was to uh, ex uh, exploit and uh, oppress people of Gilgit Bursan, and even change the status of a uh, disputed territory like uh, Gilgit Bursan, and it is, uh, of course, to crush local people of uh, Balochistan, there's no way I can support it, and no way people should support it, because it's going to bring disaster not only to Pakistan economically. Pakistan will suffer economically. Pakistani economic at, at present, yesterday's figures, Pakistani extended loan has gone up to 85 billion. Pakistani export dropped from 24 to 19 billion. And uh, import are 51 billion. That means the net uh, deficit of 32 billion. And Pakistan will pay, according to the present rates, they will pay 3.7 billion on top of uh, their uh, you know, already existing loans. So which is a big order, and it's going to really create problems for Pakistan. And I think they need to really think uh, what to do. And of course, it's security aspect, which I want to spend some time, but there's, uh, of course, not enough time left. Thank you very much.